This is a 2003 Nissan Altima 2.5 liter. The car was brought to me for pinging or pre-detonation. I rode with the customer and uh, she demonstrated what was pinging and I explained to her that it, it, it could be bad gas. She produced four receipts over the course of a month where she was changing gas stations because luckily for me she was pretty pretty up on her car the car had 297,000 miles she was the original owner uh, this car was meant I mean maintenance wise the the maintenance receipts were as thick as a King James Version Bible um, so I believed the fact that she had been changing fuel stations and that this car genuinely had an issue. So I took it to the shop. Uh, she elected to drop it off the next day, which was cool. I hooked the factory scan tool to it. Um, I will say real quick, as far as Nissan's con concerned, the older Nissan, you figure this car is 20 years old, um, an OBD2 scan tool on this old of a Nissan is it's kind of difficult because the refresh rate is uh, terrible. Uh, no fault of the tool. It doesn't matter what tool you use, whether you use a Snap-on or an OBD2 or an E-Scan. Um, the OBD2 side of the ECUs, it, it, it just doesn't communicate very fast. So if you really need data fast and in a hurry, this might not be your baby. Um, so I took the car for a ride with the factory scan tool and I monitored basic data. Um, you figure a car that's pinging. So what are we looking for? Obviously bad gas. I'm going to trust it that what she said is true. Um, you're looking at ignition timing. Uh, I'm looking for anything that's really lean. Um, I haven't got to the point where I'm looking at compression. But you would think with 297,000 miles, the compression would be probably less. So I took the car on a little spin, just lightly getting into the throttle. Um, as you can see, I do have the e-scan because once I saw the factory data, I had a good idea what was wrong with it after looking at some trims and calculated load values. So I decided to go back to the shop, get the e-scan, because uh, I, I think it would make for a good video, uh, a good teaching experience. Now what I did, you'll see my little marks here. I colored these in with orange and I put minus signs on because the before, I forgot to hit save screen. So that's my bad. Uh, here's the after, here's the before. And this is kind of what it looked like. So as I'm accelerating lightly, I'm kind of working my way up this small hill that her and I test drove on. It started detonating and my fuel trim started going negative. Uh, my little minuses here kind of represent negative. It never went red, but it was definitely in the orange. If you want to, as of right now, just looking at this data, tell me what you think's wrong with this car. I'll trust that you're being uh, honest before I go any farther. So here's my thoughts. Fuel trims are perfect. I'm working myself up through the throttle and I'm starting to take away fuel. I can tell you the, the mass airflow didn't read right. The, the calculated low value was really high and the fuel trims were going negative. These are the thoughts going through my head on one test drive. I'm gonna do a volumetric efficiency test next and that'll pretty much give it away. And uh, I'll tell you why I think it was pinging unless you guys want to type in why you think it was pinging first uh, before you see the end. But like I said, this is a representation of the bad. And that is after the car is repaired. Uh, fuel trims were good. Car actually ran really good for almost 300,000 miles. So I'm gonna run the volumetric efficiency test up and we'll go over that. It's pretty cut and dry, straightforward. And then I'll give you my thoughts on why I think it was detonating so bad. Um, and then 
you guys tell me what you think uh, along the line. That would be kind of cool. So this is about my second or third video on um, the e-scan. In one video, I think I showed some fuel issues. Uh, one video, I think the last video I did, I showed some lying uh, or misreading feedback sensors. Well, it's about time I do a video on an airflow issue. So this is the before. And one thing I want you to take away from this is you see where this green says scaled engine? Well, I actually inputted the VIN number into the software. Uh, most of the time on newer vehicles, it'll ID the car for you, but some of the older ones it will not. I took the time and typed in the full VIN. So it's a scaled engine. So the red trace is the scaled engine within the tool. And just kind of mentally remember between 70 and 80. Well, you can see that my car came in at under 60. Uh, that's the yellow. So right off the bat, that we know this engine's not breathing. So you got a couple of options when you got a car that's running low VE. One is the mass airflow misreading, meaning under reporting. Well, if you remember on the fuel trim block, if it were under reporting, meaning it was getting more air, remember how my fuel trims went negative? So that's opposite of under reporting. So I'm ruling that out right off the bat, just from this chart. The other option is, do I have clogged exhaust or something impeding airflow? You could have an intake restriction or a bad air filter. All that, you got to rely on like a visual underhood inspection. A clogged exhaust, uh, that's something that can be hard to, to figure out with an easy visual. But I can tell you I'm under 60 here with my airflow. My scaled engine says I should be between 70 and 80. We'll just call it 75 and I'm under 60 so kind of remember that here's my after that's not my after let me blow that up real quick too many buttons so here's my after now if you see here it says generic or set engine on the after I did not put the vent in um, so it just kind of throw something out there but remember my scaled engine when I actually put the vent in was between 70 and 80 and this is the same car so between 70 and 80 should be my scaled engine well look where after is I mean it is spot on I just forgot to put the vent in so this is obviously the after capture this car had a converter that was um, coming apart. Um, it affected the breathing of the engine. If you can't get air out, you can't get air in. Now, what I think was causing the pinging is this. Uh, there are different degrees of clog converters. You have some that are completely clogged. Uh, I have a video, a couple of videos old, that says I can't take the pressure. I think that was the one where I showed one building 18 pounds of pressure in the exhaust at idle. Now that is clogged. This car didn't build much pressure at idle. You actually had to be driving it and kind of pulling the hill and putting the engine under a little bit of a load before it started backing up in the exhaust, we'll say. So I think what was causing the pinging is this. As you're pulling up that hill, you're starting to build a little bit of pressure in the exhaust. Well, this engine has intake valve timing. So the purpose of VVT on the intake is to increase valve overlap um, for, for power reasons. So if we're opening the intake valve a bit early to, to get the scavenging effect from the exhaust under normal conditions, it helps pull an intake charge 
into the motor to give us more power. Well, in this case, we're still advancing the intake, but during our overlap, instead of the exhaust being an atmosphere or pushing outwards, we've built some pressure. We're actually filling the cylinder with the pressure built in the exhaust. And I think some of that EGR or that unburnt or inert gas is displacing the oxygen because we've ki we're killing our intake vacuum and we're, we're displacing oxygen with inert gas, but we're getting a full squirt of fuel. So now we've filled our cylinder with more than what it's accustomed to, than what the timing is programmed for. So our compression's increased and we're getting that detonation and we've got a lack of oxygen. That's why my fuel trims went negative as the pressure built in the exhaust, our fuel trims went negative because we, dis we have displaced oxygen. So now we've got a higher compression with a timing map that is set for a stoichiometric mi mixture, but we've got higher compression because of that exhaust being forced into the cylinder. So we're getting that detonation, that pinging, lack of oxygen. So now we're getting a, a signal to, rem to take fuel away. Um, I believe that's what's going on. The bottom line is the VE before I put a converter on this thing was uh, between 50 and 60. We'll just call it what, 58? And the after, we'll call it we'll just say 78 uh, this engine had no pinging uh, ran great uh, you can see our modeled our modeled engine on our scaled should have been about 75 and our ve was about 75 but like i said i forgot to enter the vin so um, we got the generic version right there which is okay so that's what I think was going on with the car. I put a catalytic converter on it, drove it, pinging's fixed. The VE definitely got better. It was kind of funny that this, this engine had no DTCs and all the monitors had passed. This thing had passed the converter monitor. Um, granted, uh, the car's 20 years old, so it was conformed to 20 year ago emission standards, which uh, I believe were a little bit looser than today. But uh, in the spirit of uh, YouTube, I did do a video. I pulled the AF sensor, the front oxygen sensor out, and I stuck a boroscope in to give you guys a inside version of a clogged converter. Uh, the converter had started coming apart, and it had clogged some of the passages, which you'll see. So I hope you like yet another e-scan video. Uh, don't forget to, uh, to to share. Like I said, there's a link somewhere on my site. You know, if you guys are in any sort of Facebook or any other forums, uh, you want to refer anyone to any of my videos, please do it. Click the link, share the link. Uh, the last eScan video I did, I got a lot of comments, which was great. I appreciate it. Um, as always, if you if I've misspoken or said something wrong or something you agree or disagree and you want to talk about it, please. Be respectful. Put it in the comment section. I try to answer. I'm pretty good about answering all my comments. Uh, even if it's a thumbs up. I, I try to type something in. If you guys take the time to type to me, I try to take the time to type back. So, being all that said, have a good one. Thank you for watching this long. And uh, enjoy the little video. I hope it doesn't make you dizzy looking inside of a catalytic converter on an asthmatic Nissan Altima.